Bitcoin. I mean, you at one point, I think back in April, told Dow Jones that it could go to about $500,000. Do you still hold that target? Do you still think that's where we're headed? I, I, we do. I do. Yasin El Mandra is our uh, crypto analyst, and and uh, we we go through soul searching times like this and and scrape the models. And yes, our conviction is as high. What's good, people? Welcome back to another episode on my channel. It is your boy Elijah. Today we're gonna take a deep dive through the on-chain metrics of the cryptocurrency market. So we're gonna be looking at the cold hard data about what is going on in the market. We're going to take a look at everything from prices to exchange volume to web traffic, the entire scope of what's been going on in the cryptocurrency market. Really quick before we get into the video for today, make sure you smash that like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So as you can see right here on my screen, we are looking at the spot data for the market. So first things first, you see the exchange volume in the cryptocurrency market is at an all time high still way above 1.5 trillion dollar market and in terms of what number 1.79 trillion in may so the exchange volume which is the amount of money being exchanged on the platform overall and as you can see here the daily exchange is also at an all-time high right around the 80 billion mark these are very very strong numbers because it goes to show that the market overall yes the prices may be down but it is relatively healthy when it comes to the amount of transactions and involvement the market has going on. Moving on to the futures. So basically, we have long liquidations and short liquidations. And just to give you a quick insight on what long and short is, as you can see here, there are two types of position, long and short. In the first case, the trader expects the profit from the growth of the asset. So a long, a trader expects a profit. And from the growth of the asset so the asset goes up so bitcoin and ethereum the rest goes up in price and the trader profits and a short it's decreased so ethereum bitcoin goes down on a short and the trader makes money so as you can see here on the left side we have long liquidations and compared to the short liquidations if you look at the numbers specifically you can see that the long liquidations is in the billions whereas the shorts are more relatively in the millions. So this doesn't necessarily mean um, one thing or the other. It doesn't necessarily mean that there will be more growth in the market, but it does show that a lot more people are positive um, for the cryptocurrency market than are shorting. So that's just something to keep in mind. Moving on to the prices. We all know the prices have been relatively falling lately, but just to take a quick step back. So if we zoom out, to a year to date as you can see here if we are just sitting in the month we're like oh my god this past month has been bad but if you take a step back and you look back this basically puts us at a position we were at earlier february around that time period so bitcoin was around 38 39 thousand dollars back then as well if you look at ethereum something pretty similar so this takes ethereum back to april which isn't too long ago, actually. So Ethereum didn't have quite the level of correction that Bitcoin did in this recent drop. And as you can see, Ethereum's price performance is pretty explosive in the 90 day and 30 day chart. You can see Ethereum is in red, Bitcoin is in purple. And Ethereum actually has a more explosive run when it comes to the price and the growth of the price. And just for my stock investors out there, People also interested in stocks. So these are some companies that are openly trading um, stocks for cryptocurrency. So Square has a huge portfolio of Bitcoin specifically, and they allow their customers to trade through Cash App uh, Bitcoin as well. So these are some other companies. So as you can see, these companies are relatively growing right in market cap. So they look like profitable companies in the long run. They might also be profitable if that's something you all are interested in looking at on the stock market definitely go check those companies out speaking of companies again another metric here that is very very valuable in my opinion is the number of verified users so this number is very strong and means a lot to me specifically because the cryptocurrency market is a very very people driven market it's based about network effect the more people in the network the more valuable the network is 
And as you can see, Coinbase is growing relatively quickly. Between 2020 and 2021, they saw a huge explosion in the growth rate. As you can see, previous to that, the growth was pretty steady and then boom, pretty huge explosion there. And another thing here is the transacting users, also super, super high. These metrics are very, very healthy. Moving on to the current cryptocurrencies held on Coinbase. This is just one platform again. One really important metric I want you all to pay attention to in this video is the Coinbase volume by customer segment here. So in blue, we have institution. In red, we have retail. Retail is me and you, the average person. And as you can see, institutional investors are going the Zerk. They are absolutely doubling down in this market. Just to point that out, as you can see, institutional investors are definitely taking the market by storm. Just make sure you keep that in mind as well as you continue to move through this market. So let's take a quick look at Bitcoin because Bitcoin definitely leads the market when it comes to the direction of the cryptocurrency market. It runs a majority of what happens. So the on-chain volume for Bitcoin is still at its all-time high, meaning the amount of volume going on in transactions on-chain is high. So just to quickly explain what on-chain is, on-chain transaction refers to transactions that are recorded and verified on the blockchain. And just to give you a better idea of what that means, off-chain transactions don't occur on the blockchain network. Instead, are transacted through another electronic system like PayPal, Cash App, and those other platforms, right? So, and as you can see here, the on-chain volume, super, super strong for Bitcoin as well. It's not as, it's relatively growing, um, not as rapidly you will see in a second as Ethereum, but relatively still healthy, right? It's at its all time high. Nothing really necess necessarily dropped off in a drastic number. So let's take a look at Ethereum. And as you can see, Ethereum has a very, very explosive on chain volume compared to Bitcoin specifically. If you look at Bitcoin here, the, on the daily trend, the transaction on Bitcoin's network um is sitting in the thousands when you compare this to ethereum on the other hand it is sitting in the millions right so the transactions on ethereum's network is super super high as you can see and relatively growing right so that means the use case for ethereum is very high so there's a lot of people on the network using ethereum very very frequently and the interesting thing is like people have pointed out, Ethereum may be the oil, right? Like a comparison to real life tangible things, the oil of the blockchain world, whereas Bitcoin is the gold of the blockchain world. Gold in, you know, is not necessarily changing hands every day, right? When you buy gold, you're not necessarily going to be using it to make transactions. But if you had oil, oil moves very, very quickly. You use oil to trading very, very fast everyone is buying oil every single day so the you know it's very very fast how it liquidates anyways as you can see here too the number of active addresses on ethereum is spiking up really really high which is really healthy as well so these numbers are very very clean in my opinion here we did see a quick correction here when it comes to the adjusted on-chain volume um, but that number relatively is still high when you compare it to the early of may right so this market is still in a healthy charting line in a sense when you take a zoom out picture and step away from the most recent fear cases that's been going on in the news right so it's always nice to take a step back and just take a picture of the horizon that you are investing and as you can see the one of the big problems ethereum has is the transaction fees right super super high and we are going to see some changes to Ethereum's network. Ethereum 2.0 is coming, which is going to bring proof of stake to Ethereum's network. And also EIP 1559 is going to make Ethereum a deflationary asset by continuing to burning Ethereum on the network. So those are going to definitely help with the fees at some point. We're not sure exactly what that's going to look like. But if you want to see a better idea of uh, a breakdown of those two things I just mentioned, make sure you check out my channel. I have a video breaking those two things down and what they mean. So as you can see here, transaction count super high as well. Number of new addresses, Bitcoin still leading here, but Ethereum relatively growing. Um, and 
Ethereum still has 20% of the market, whereas Bitcoin is closer to 50% of the market. So it's very interesting to see, you know, it make its way here as well. Finally, this is a little bit of a different metric, but I think it's still relatively important to keep in mind. So when you look at the web traffic for cryptocurrency exchange, when you compare it to 2018, which was when we saw the huge, huge bubble burst back in the day, it was sitting around 4, 531 0.7 million in web traffic so a lot of retail investors were very aware and we're getting close to that point we're sitting pretty uh, relatively at the same area actually um, and we saw uh, a similar kind of downtrend um, so does it mean that the bubble burst well that's a good question um, it seems like a different market and a more mature market uh, because back here there weren't a lot of institutional investors as we saw so there, were, there weren't a lot of institutional investors putting billions and billions of dollars into the market back in 2018. So is it going to look the same? Well, not quite sure, but we're going to continue to keep an eye on it. I personally think that the market is more mature than it was in 2018. So I think this is going to look a bit different when it comes to how the, the rest of the chart is going to look in the next coming months. Right. So. As you can see, the web traffic is relatively strong for Binance and Coinbase, two of the biggest exchanges. Google search volume isn't even close to where it was at um, back in 2017, where all the craze was going on. The interest in Bitcoin still isn't that high um, as it was in the past. A lot of other bit, um, coins like maybe Dogecoin may be having a lot of search volume, uh, but Bitcoin is the market leader when it comes to how um, to evaluate this market, I would say. So there, I, it looks like there's still room for for more in retail investors to enter the market uh, when it comes to the network effect and the growth that this market could really see. We will continue to see depending on how the market reacts in the next couple of weeks. The markets is really getting tested right now and we're going to continue to stay updated on this channel. Ethereum, as you can see on the other hand, is sitting at its all-time high, relatively exploding when it comes to the Google search volume, doing really, really well. I think Ethereum is getting the shine time that it deserves now in the more mature market. So I think Ethereum, there's this conversation about Ethereum flipping Bitcoin, meaning Ethereum eventually becoming the number one cryptocurrency on the markets. Is this a possibility? I think it is a possibility. Um, we're just gonna have to wait and see because Ethereum has powered a lot of different things that we see today like decentralized finance, NFTs, and a lot more use cases, right? As you can see, DeFi is very huge, asset management, derivatives, exchanges, decentralized exchanges, lending, stable coins, you know, these are very, very huge things and this is just the beginning. We're just scratching the surface of possibilities when it comes to smart contracts and how they could power uh, transactions over the internet. Anyway, it was just your boy Elijah. I was trying to bring you some quick data and facts about what's been going on in the market on the back end side of things, not necessarily what you see when it comes to the prices on the market, because I know it's very easy to get caught up on the numbers on the screen with the prices, but relatively on the back end of things, the cryptocurrency market has never been stronger before when it comes to the actual use case and the value behind it. This is definitely something that has been growing solid from a foundational perspective. Very excited to see how the crypt cryptocurrency market continues to grow. If you're also excited and interested to continue to get more insightful information like this, make sure you smash that like button. And if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe because I will always be giving you closer looks like this of insightful information. It was your boy Elijah again. Thank you for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Don't speak to no one but the facts to the mass.